Neil, second round, second target, third round, third target. Coming up, picking up object, moving towards the last and final object, pass the cone, draw your secondary weapon, have a pair. Ready! Engage! Yup, one, two, come on, three, yup, four, yup, five, yup, six, yup. Growing up here in San Antonio, the only thing I knew was the barrio. I just knew about surviving, adapting to my environment, doing what I needed to do, just to live. And at that point in time, about two months from graduating, I went in and I rogered up and I listened into the Marine Corps. Nobody knew, I didn't tell nobody, it was just a decision. Respected in the streets, cool. How can I be respected as a man? I'm gonna get out of here, get out of this neighborhood, do something with my life, join the Marine Corps, and see where that takes me. I mean, your whole young life, people ask you, what do you wanna do when you grow up? And I knew that my dad's job meant something. He had deployed in the Gulf War, and even though I didn't really understand what that meant as a four-year-old, I think the way that that impacted my siblings and I was this demonstration of if you have the ability to help, you should help. And that service was important. I served for nine years on active duty, and I've been on three deployments, um, two to Iraq and one to Afghanistan. New York was rough in those days, it was the 70s, going up in the South Bronx. I went down a path I'm not very proud of. Uh, I was given a choice, you know, a Go to jail, join the military. You know, you make a choice. And uh, I, I made that choice to, you know, go in the military. I don't care if you're from this inner city kid from New York, right? The military doesn't care about that. What they care about is being a good soldier, a good citizen. And you've got to have morals. You've got to have integrity. Um, and uh, that is what made me stay. From sun up to sun down, 24 seven, you're a soldier. Two weeks from uh, leaving Afghanistan, about to rotate out, two weeks. We were supposed to conduct some patrols with the ANA, and then out of nowhere, it was just smoke, dust, it was foggy, it was phasey, it was just like, I didn't know what was going on. And I looked down and my, my legs are full of blood, yeah? I stepped on an IED and it, I was trying to process this, it was so fast, and that's when I had that transition to come back here to San Antonio, Texas, as a, as a, as a combat wounded, injured Marine. I probably served for three years, being either the only female in a unit, or you know, one of three out of 50, kind of is about the, the numbers. I did a deployment, uh, I had a unique mission where it was with a bunch of other women, so meeting other women that were also soldiers and also competent and passionate um, and took their service seriously made me realize it's not that strange to be a woman soldier. It's a sisterhood I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up for anything. Ashley was my friend. She was a CST with me and we deployed to Afghanistan in 2011 and she was killed in action in October of that year. And Ashley really wanted to be a mom. So I don't take that for granted. It was a huge identity change for me in the same year leaving active duty and becoming a parent. I'm so grateful for the experiences that I had, but I want to give her something different. For me, the reserves has been a great compromise in that, so my daughter still sees me in uniform occasionally, and I know she's proud and excited. Um, not that she has any idea what that means, but I wouldn't trade the time that I get with her for anything. By the time my daughter was born, I was in a, a uh, special missions uh, company unit that uh, specialized in counterterrorism direct action. You learn about your, your country, what it means to sacrifice, servitude, discipline, those things that we, we definitely have to, to pass on and improve upon it. It 
finally dawned on me that you're missing a leg, you're bound to a wheelchair. It withdrew me from my, from my surroundings. It withdrew me from my own family. It withdrew me from everyone because I didn't know how to use depression as anything, but I knew how to use anger. It motivated me to, to work, to get into the gym and to start walking again. I use fitness as a medium to bridge that mind, body, spirit, that connection together. The primary focus has been first responders and how they deal with stresses of life, utilizing that energy in a, in a constructive manner. And if I had to do it all again, I would still make the same choices and I still become and I will still serve in the military. That's the only reason that I have changed when they say veteran, yes, I, I, I am proud to be a veteran. I'm, I'm proud to serve this great nation. I've, I'm proud to serve with my brothers and sisters, fighting for a cause greater than yourself. I love this country. Sacrificing our country and our family, that's what a veteran is. That's what it means. I know what they have sacrificed. Physical wounds, emotional wounds. If we had a lesson to give to our peers, it would be to not take life for granted.